In today's news, Honorable Flax Charles says she plans to announce her next step soon. Honorable Penn speaks on price living in the Virgin Islands and electronic tags, of course, uh, reform of the court procedures needed to fix remand issues. Of course, we take a look at work continuing on the market square despite the opening and Wheatley distances himself from facilitating police abuse of powers. In addition to that, the BVI Asia Abroad Program 2023-2024 scholarship program is officially open. Mr. Rodney Skelton, of course, we had an interview with him and we encourage you to take a look at that. We have the details of this and so much more when 284 News returns. One. Uh, yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health is Well. We have Joel Turnbull. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. First of all, right, your, your footwork. Stephen Payne. That was a 9 out of 10. I know you got the service down pat. Steve Augustine. He did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps. And as you can see, it's actually. <laughs> you're feeling it. Lonzo Boynes. Taekwondo. Adam Morrows. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I uh, am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Graham. It bites. It will Everything bite. <laughs> get your water, get your fruits and veggies and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy. Hello everyone, it is Thursday, February 16th, 2023. Welcome to this edition of 284 News. I'm Ron Grant, bringing you the latest out of Tortola in the Virgin Islands and of course beyond. Thank you so much for joining us. A happy Thursday is wished to each and every one of you. Beginning our newscast on the local scene. Charles, of course, the Honorable Shireen Flax Charles, that is, speaks on her steps to contest the next uh, at large, uh, of course, competition in within the Virgin Isles. Now, territorial at large representative, the Honorable Shireen Flax Charles, says she was uh, not silenced and she has disclosed that she will be revealing to the public in short order which new political party she will be joining ahead of the upcoming general election. And she did this, of course, without stating at any point whether or not she's leaning towards anyone. She did say, however, in our interview as well, that all of the parties have reached out to her. Flax Charles, who is the Junior Minister for Trade and Economic Development, Agriculture, as well as Fisheries, recently announced her resignation from the Virgin Islands Party. Now, during an interview with Twit4 Media, she expressed her intention of running in the upcoming general elections where she will be contesting for either the territory at large opposition or, she said, the Knight District, Electoral District. What I'm saying is, is that I'm, I've been speaking with all of the parties, all of the persons who are aligned with independence, and a decision will come very soon. I, I, I don't think um, it would be fair to the public to keep the public waiting too long because persons want to be able to understand where I stand in this new phase of uh, my career in representation mm -hmm. and so we will be be reaching out very soon um, after consulting with my family as to the direction that i go in having the attention of most parties and alliances is nothing new to flex charles as she said this was the case prior to the 2019 general elections at this time, I do not wish to reveal, but I will say, because I've never hidden it from in 2018, every party that was out there, every alliance that was out there reached out to me. I chose the VIP at the time. Um, the time has come for me to part ways with the Virgin Islands party, and I did so. Yes. I'm not afraid to say, because I believe in transparency, all of the parties, even independent persons within the territory have reached out to me. And I have had conversations with them because I believe that the values that I stand for, persons look at that, persons realize the type of person I am. 
the junior minister who has a bit of a reputation for being outspoken even if it contradicts the views of the government said she will not be silenced adding that her priority is to the people and not a political party i don't like negativity i want to see positive things happening in in the territory and um that is a possibility what i would say is that i will not be silenced i will not I prefer to be the lone voice in the wilderness because I know that is what is the best thing for the people of this territory. And examples have been shown of that as it relates to my actions. And I, 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 I believe that persons feel that once you're with a party that you must toe the line even though something is wrong. My priority is not to any party, as I've said in my statement. My priority is to the people of this territory. And I will use the example of the situation at the Bats. Four of us protested, but I knew why I protested. Because it would have created severe economic hardship for persons throughout the territory if that decision was followed through. Secondly, with the situation with the former speaker, I got up and rightly so, in my estimation, I was not in favor and I voiced my opinion on that. When asked whether she felt that her outspoken nature would rub some of her colleagues in the wrong manner, she said it was expected. However, she said her approach has inspired many persons across the territory to go against the grain when it is in favor of the people. That's natural. I, um, it's a very natural thing. Remember, the, the, the Virgin Islands are very entrenched in the party system. And so I expected that. But I believe that at the end of the day, each of us, whether I'm an elected member in the House of Assembly or a regular person on the street, each of us has an opinion and those opinions should be respected. And it is, it is important for us to realize that each of us have a voice. Each of us needs to be able to speak up. This morning, I got a message from a young man. I had a conversation online with him one day, and that was many, maybe a year ago, and he wrote back and he said to me this morning, he said, you know, I am... I just want to congratulate you for taking a stand. I want to let you know that I'm supporting you because my voice is very small and not there at all. That is what he said to me. Minister for Social Development, the Honorable Marlon A. Penn, believes that in order to address the cost of living crisis in the territory, we must create avenues for Virgin Islanders to build wealth. This, he admits, that the rising minimum wage has not been a topic of discussion for him and his national unity government. Take a look at this report. Is anyone in the government of the Virgin Islands looking at increasing minimum wage? Minister for Social Development, Honorable Marlon Penn, says it is a necessary discussion, but not one he has had in this unity government. Penn spoke during a recent appearance on a radio talk show. There, he said that there needs to be serious thoughts on what it costs to live a decent life in the Virgin Islands. It is not a discussion that I've, I've had in this unity government, but I think it's a discussion that we need to have going forward. We need to look at a living wage. Uh, one of the things that we've discussed with this new transformation of the grant program at social development is that what is a living wage in the BVI? For instance, right now we're offering persons some assistance, but it's based on some thinking 12 plus years ago that someone decided, okay, we just give something a month and this is what we're giving for rent, this is what we're giving for so, but we're not, we haven't really looked at what is a, a what, is it, what does it cost to live in the BBI. So for instance, you may have someone who's making $24,000 a year, say $2,000 a month, you would say, okay, this should be all right, this should be able to, so, but, but in the BBI, rent is $1,200 a month. If they have kids, they have to pay for daycare, they have to pay it's for- It's more things. than 50%. You know, you know? So, so you're looking at a situation where persons might seem to be gainfully employed, but they, they fall in the category of working poor. So, so you have to, those persons will still need to get some type of support or some mm -hmm. type of assistance. 
if if they they're going to live a decent life in the country. Penn noted that it is imperative that efforts are made to strengthen the economic base of the territory and present opportunities for Virgin Islanders to not just live but to build wealth. But this is a whole economic issue that we're speaking about as well. I think one of the areas that we looked at was, was to, to put an engine that will help drive economic development, economic regulation, economic administration, and that was with the Trade Commission, which mm -hmm. all the policy work was done, the legislation was prepared, they had an investment promotion agency, the Consumer Protection Agency, and a new business licensing act that will help to drive economic growth and economic development in the country. Like for instance, if we're going to go into new industries, you have to be well researched in those industries. Know what are the spin-off business opportunities for those industries to ensure that your people are prepared to capitalize off of those spin-off in those industries. Even within the existing industries, there are opportunities that we're not capitalizing on. <coughs> and there's an opportunity for us through an agency like a trade commission to figure out what those opportunities are. On the issue of making sure that if the government is given a particular relief or, or some kind of program or incentive for a business, you have to ensure there's a converse economic benefit um, to the consumers as well. So you cannot just give economic relief and then there's the, 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 the economic base or the consumer base continues to struggle even more. So that's monies that are coming out from the Treasury coming up from the public purse that is not going, going to the business the, but not going to the worker not going to the worker or yeah. not even going to developing some of the okay. shortfalls that you have as a, as, a, as a country as well your infrastructural yeah. needs yeah. educational needs and those things I think that the key to, to driving this is one rebuilding and, and strengthening your economic base um, two persons that then have more opportunity to earn within, within the economy um, you then you have an opportunity now to, to be able to offer more um, and, um, incentives to businesses so businesses can be more efficient and also offer more opportunities for persons within the public service who are offering these services uh, within the sectors. In order to realize this, he stressed that there must be an unwavering effort to get the Trade Commission up and running. What I will say is that the last thing I heard is that they were, they were selecting someone for um, the, the board of the Trade Commission. Mm. Um, I believe that 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 entity is too critical for us. We have to move expedition, ex 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 expeditiously, expeditiously mm -hmm. to get that up and running because I think it's very important because our economic base is being eroded and we need to stabilize in terms of the economic side of things and have a focused approach in terms of how we're going to move our economy forward. Yeah. For 284 News, I am Jaco Wooding. And up next, viewers, we have more local news. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. There are many ways to enjoy life, like so many ways to count on popular. Father Jesus, that learn your long like church souls. Hmm. Alright, let me enjoy the rest of it. Yeah. Next customer in line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny boy, come yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny boy. You must have cut front of people. It's okay, it's okay. I'll take care of it. What? No, no man protect you. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. You want a top of Eh? You want a top of Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top-Up Turn-Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT top-up is sold and top-up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top-up or what? Eh? Is someone gonna get that? Hello. Hello. I, I, so nice of you to have clean up for us. Hi, baby. We're like in-laws that don't show up unannounced. Don't worry. I've got this. CG Insurance. Good like that. Welcome back, everyone. Continuing on, His Excellency Governor John Ranking, CMG, believes... Uh, Electronic tags and reform in court procedures will assist. Well, 
with reducing sorry, the current backlog and the length of time that some prisoners spend on remand. Now, the issue was posed in a, re question, a recent question to the governor during a recent press conference where he was asked whether his office intends to address the matter, which has seen prisoners in some instances being on remand in excess of four years. Uh, we have a challenge in relation to the length of time which some prisoners spend on remand. And I would like to see uh, reform in two areas. Uh, one is uh, we need to make the uh, court procedures as efficient as possible. And we need uh, the police and the prosecutorial services and the defence lawyers to assist in that progress. And there is work on further reform of the criminal procedure rules, which I hope will help to speed things up. Uh, secondly, um, I, I in fact share responsibility for the prison together with the, the Ministry for Health. But one of the areas on which I would uh, wish to see progress, and I, I tried carefully, but I believe the Minister for Health would share this wish, would be to see if we can uh, have electronic tax in, in the territory, which would allow some of those who are currently in remand, if they're not potentially dangerous prisoners, to actually be at home with electronic tags rather than have to spend time in prison, which may not actually be helpful for their own development, and of course, which is costly. So I hope that progress can be made in that area, but the budgetary provision for that with respect does not lie in my hands. The governor said the United Kingdom provides funding for the prison and the police, but also acknowledged that several issues do exist within the prison that needs addressing. But challenges in relation to uh, the physical security uh, at the prison, uh, challenges in relation to the uh, conditions for the prisoners. And so the UK government has provided new uh, mattresses and basic materials to allow the welfare of the prisoners to be increased. And yes, there are problems in relation to the numbers of uh, prison officers. And I hope that they can be resolved through, first of all, uh, increased recruitment into vacancies. And um, secondly, dealing with uh, sickness absences at the prison. And then uh, thirdly, and I tread here with uh, caution, but of course prison officers, like other public servants, are waiting for the outcomes of compensation reviews, which may help in that recruitment process as well. Governor Ranking also spoke on what his office will be doing directly to address some of the prison staffing issues. What we are doing is trying to get uh, the HR processes in the territory to confirm uh, the appointments and promotions of a number of prison officers uh, to uh, get them into more responsible positions within the prison and help its overall operation. Although the recently commissioned Rotan Market Square is now in operation, works continue to see through the facility and as it was visualized within the project, the government anticipates spending an additional uh, 400000 along the way. More on this report. Despite being open for business as of February 13, 2023, the Roadtown Market Square is not yet completed. This, as explained by Minister for Communications and Works Honorable Kai Reimer, is due to some outstanding construction works and installations required on the site. A bus shelter will be constructed in the open area adjacent to the road with benches to accommodate up to 25 persons and serve as a central point for passengers to gather for collection by the bus operators. Each kiosk will be enclosed with hurricane shutters, hurricane rated shutters, and these shutters, when open, will provide shelter for patrons from rain, sun, and as to how they will be designed. While Reimer did not provide a specific timeline for when these final areas will be addressed, he did indicate that contractors are seeking to complete the bus shelter in short order. At the point of opening, the project had cost the government of the Virgin Islands just over $1.3 million. A total of $1,305,304.06 has been committed to this project, which spans which spans a total of four budget cycles. So we have been through four budget cycles to get where we are today. 
At completion, Reimer anticipates that the total cost of this project will be $1.7 million. For To It For News, I am Jacka Whitting. The issue of policing is not just a local one, but as well a national and international issue. Premier Dr. The Honorable Natalia D. Wheatley has rubbished allegations that his government is attempting to give the Royal Virgin Isles Police Force powers that can be abused through the Police Act 2023. Wheatley says he is the last person in the Virgin Islands who would do such given his own experiences with the police. Take a look. Amid turmoil surrounding the heightened powers that the Police Act 2023 seeks to grant to the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, Premier Dr. The Honorable Natalia Weasley has distanced himself from allegations that the territory's leadership is opening the gates for abuses of those powers by law enforcement. After announcing the postponement of the second and third readings of the bill, Wheatley defended himself against those allegations by stating that he is, quote, the last person in the Virgin Islands that would grant the police powers that could be abused, end quote. Wheatley owed this greatly to having experienced abuse of power at the hands of law enforcement at three distinctive points in his life, both at home in the Virgin Islands and abroad. The first incident he recalled occurred while he was navigating Roadtown as a teenager. In 1996, I was walking down the street one late night in Road Town. A jeep pulled next to me, and a man jumped out and pointed a gun at my head and told me to get on the ground. Madam Speaker, I couldn't be any more than 16 years old at the time. He cuffed me, put me in the back of the jeep, and took me to the police station for questioning. After realizing that I was not who they thought I was, I was released. The second incident, which has in recent years become a tale too often replicated on too many, occurred at the hands of United States of America law enforcement and landed him an undeserved stay in detention. While studying in Atlanta in 1999, a police officer gave me a traffic, traffic ticket that I thought was unjust. I protested, that's a nice way of putting it, and he said if I said one more word, I would spend the night in jail. I continued protesting, that's a nice way of saying it, and he arrested me and I indeed spent the night in jail. His third experience occurred in the United Kingdom, when he was again wrongfully identified and accused of a crime by police officers. While studying in the United Kingdom in 2004, I had an encounter while visiting a friend's home. Two police officers in plain clothes approached me and accused me of car carrying a crowbar in my school bag that I used to break into people's homes. I thought that this was an outrageous accusation and refused to be searched. The two officers then jumped on me and we had a struggle for about 20 minutes. They managed to get me down and cuff me. They called for backup and there were about nine officers who surrounded me and were pushing me around the circle. When an onlooker walked by, they finally left, but not before emptying my school books out of my bag onto the pavement. Wheatley stressed that he does not support such abuses by law enforcement and has stood publicly as possibly the only Virgin Islander to lead a march in London against a death in police detention to express his disapproval. For To It For News, I am Jacques Wooding. Up next, everyone, we have more local news. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Hun, it's asking for your password. Huh? You were logged out. I need the password. Uh, uh, B R. What's the rest? Um, B R A N D I, the number four, E V E R? Who's Brandy? We're like the password that isn't your ex girlfriend's name. CG Insurance. Good like that. I should have changed it. You should have. You're, you're right. 
Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284 Media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Mm. Is that my lunch? Hmm? Is that my lunch? Mm -mm. We're like the co-worker that doesn't eat your lunch. I'm John. I'm John. CG Insurance. Good like that. Welcome back, everyone. The BVI government's representative office in Hong Kong, in partnership with the Ministry of Education, is pleased to announce the opening of the 2023-2024 applications for the BVI's Asia Abroad Scholarship Program. The program seeks to strengthen the territory's ties with Asia through international education and cultural exchange. Take a look at this report. The BVI government's representative office in Hong Kong, BVI Hong Kong office, in partnership with the Ministry of Education, is pleased to announce the opening of the 2023-2024 applications for the BVI's Asia Abroad Scholarship Program. The program seeks to strengthen the territory's ties with Asia through international education and culture exchange. This is an exciting opportunity for Virgin Islanders to go beyond the familiarity of the Caribbean, North America, and Europe and explore the eastern world of countries where China, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Thailand, and Singapore are among the most popular. Although distant, the BVI has a 30-plus year relationship with the Asia-Pacific region in financial services and has maintained a representative office in Hong Kong to serve the region over the past 10 years. More than 50% of all BVI financial services revenue is generated in Asia via primary markets in Hong Kong, China, and Singapore. The study abroad program is designed to sensitize Virgin Islanders to Asia's economic and cultural importance to the territory's development. Now, the scholarship program provides financial support for tuition-free study towards bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degree studies, as well as short language programs in the subject areas of agriculture, marine science, public administration, public policy, hospitality and tourism, engineering, information technology, media and communications, nursing, public health, finance, and other subjects of need within the Virgin Islands. In addition to academic studies, the Asia and a broad program provides an excellent opportunity for travelers across the region where the different cultural food and people and environments of Asia can be experienced. The curious explorer can take short, easy, budget-friendly trips by flight, bus, train, car, or boat to neighboring countries to further their international travel experience. A quick trip to the monuments of Cambodia, sunny beaches of Vietnam, tigers and temples of Thailand, K-pop concerts in South Korea, anime festivals in Japan, or the Great Wall of China are all within one to three hours reach, where, whether you choose whether you choose to study in the perfect springboard or travel across Asia. The scholarship program is open to all eligible Virgin Islanders and can be accessed in just five simple steps. Step one, email a letter of interest with biographical details about yourself and your academic employment background to study in Asia at bvihongkongoffice.com.hk. Step two, apply to a minimum of two or participating universities. Step 3. Submit the required documentation to the BVI Hong Kong office. And Step 4. Sit and interview with the Ministry of Education. Step 5. Jump on the plane and begin your journey. Interested persons should apply as soon as possible. The application portal closes March 31st, 2023. Now the world-class education and immersive cultural experience provided by the Asia Abroad program promises to internationalize Virgin Islanders through forging new connections, building global professional networks, and development of lifelong employment skills that will lead to the thriving and vibrant career. Most importantly, the experience gained will help build a better Virgin Islands internationalized for the future. And that is all our news today. Have a beautiful rest of the day. Bye-bye.